Hey everyone, it's Kenlin and welcome to the new moon in Taurus activation. We get to activate today this planetary energy of abundance, of finally being able to step into that thing that we have envisioned and dreamed for ourselves, but we had to go through quite a lot to get there. And I want to present something that I'm not hearing, but it feels intuitive to me. And that is that this new moon in Taurus relates to the North Node in in Taurus. I feel that because the themes of Taurus are the same. And, you know, the North Node, we've talked about this, moved into Aries in July of 2023. And so the prior 18 months before that happened, we had the North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio. And some of us had our nodal returns and really got worked on the on the message of what does that Taurus principle bring to us and what needs an up level in our lives. Everybody got worked because it was the North Node of the Moon. And it could be your personal North Node if you were experiencing a nodal return. So even more amplified and intense. So the way that I'm feeling this North Node in Taurus is almost like the the completion of that cycle that that reveals a whole new opening in the very areas that that North Node in Taurus was meant to heal. And let's look at that. What is it meant to heal? Well, issues of embodiment, issues of finances, money, resources, and and what's underneath that, but self-worth and value. It's not just self-value, and self-worth, but it's also what do you value in the world? What what is worth something to you? What's worth putting your energy behind and manifesting? And we saw over that period, and especially since the North Node has moved into Aries, we've been noticing that our values have shifted. They've come more in alignment. And as they've come more in alignment, what's happened is we've gotten clearer. We've gotten clear about our lanes, who we are. And that means that who we are not, we are not on this planet to be everything to everyone. It's just, you know, that's already, that job's taken by God. (laughs) You know, (laughs) we are here to be the particularity, to allow consciousness to stream through the particularity called me, called you and continually die to who I think I am and be reborn into into new versions of this template. That feels exciting to me. And that's what the Taurus new moon is bringing to us. So let's look and dive in a little bit deeper. You may want to uh, get the Zodiac wheel out for yourself, get your chart out or draw it yourself. You can draw it by making a circle with 12 slices and just And then you can name the houses. House one is below the line, that sort of horizontal horizon. And then it goes in a counterclockwise way all the way around the zodiac so that 12 sits on top of one. And I share that because not a lot of people who listen to me are deeply into astrology. And this is whole sign astrology. I love it because it's simple and clear. So we start with our rising sign and our ascendant in the first house and then work around. So if your ascendant is Taurus, then the second house is Gemini. And so work all the way around so you can find where is the activity happening inside my chart that's happening inside the cosmos right now. And that will allow you to play with a deeper level of of perhaps context that will show you what's really been up. Um, There's, there are, the planets are all in a alignment as they were during the solar eclipse. So remember we had a constellation in Aries and then we had the Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus. All the planets have just shifted, except for some have not because they're slower moving. So let's presence what we're talking about. And as we look at a new moon, we're looking at 
what are we calling in? What are our intentions? What are the seeds we're planting? And this is a like, I think an upgraded question. It, it's not an ordinary, what seeds are you planting? Oh, I want, I want to win the lottery. I want this, or I want that. No, we're done with that kind of thinking. We're actually tuning into our embodiment and asking ourselves, what do I value now? What's worth my life force energy? What's, what's worth me saying no to? Because then I say yes to this other thing here. And that's the game we're here to play. We're here to choose. <laughs> and, and for some people, that's really hard. That used to be really hard. That felt like death to me before. But it's been my greatest um, pathway to success is choosing. When we don't choose, we keep all these options open. And it may feel in one sense, like, like so much potentiality, but we never actualize it. And the energy of today is to actualize the energy when, and that's Mars and Aries. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So this new moon has also this feel of the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together in unity. It's just luscious. So it's a really good time to make your intentions. And let me say that the new moon is exact on May 7th or 8th, depending on your time zone. So we get to do a ritual. We'll do a little activation here at the end. So follow along, but let's put a little context around it. And if you have your chart right now, or if you want to pause and then write your chart out so that you know where's Aquarius, where's Pisces, where's Aries, and where's Taurus, because that's where all the action is. You know, we've got 12 planets and they're all in one of those four signs. So we know we have Aquarius and um, Pluto retrograde in Aquarius. We've, I've already done a video on that. That happened May 2nd. And there was some opposition to Venus at that time. And it was so intense. So now Venus has freed herself and she's in movement and she's in Taurus. And she's also part of this new moon. She's the ruler of this new moon. So this new moon is ruled by beauty. You know, where we've had so many moons ruled by like uh, Saturn, <laughs> you know, Pluto. This one is ruled by Venus. So let's really milk this one for the beauty that it holds for us. Aquarius. So know where that is in your chart. We have Aries. I mean, sorry, we have Pluto. Then let's move to Pisces. In Pisces, and we're going counterclockwise. So in Pisces, we have Neptune, 29 degrees. That's an important degree point. And I've said in the May transmission that we're going to have five planets in 29 degrees in May. So this is a very interesting completion month and also beginning month. And, and we have like so many iterations of endings and beginnings. So we have, uh, I said, Pisces, uh, in Pisces, we have Neptune and we also have Saturn. Saturn has been in Pisces and will be in Pisces for, I think, another year and a half. Some of us are experiencing our Saturn return, so I'm tracking that one pretty closely. I'll say that Saturn is at 15 degrees, so the degree points are important, so when you actually run your chart, you know what the degree points are of the planets inside the signs. Really interesting to track, because sometimes they're right on top of each other or conjunct with each other, and, and that just lends itself power the two are acting as one or the three are acting as one. All right, now let's move into Aries. We have three planets in Aries and the North Node, which is a point, not a planet. So we have Mars at five degrees Aries. We have Chiron and Mercury conjunct in 21 degrees. Now we talked about this several times during Mercury retrograde that Chiron's going to make a third pass to with Mercury and, or Mercury is going to make a third pass to Chiron. That's a better way of saying it because Chiron's going to hang out in, in Aries, but Mercury is going to move on. It's a faster moving planet, but with its retrograde, it touched it, moved backward, touched it. And it, and so we had three times, and now this is the third pass where we have been getting information around our healing. So at this point, whether you know it or not, you, you have 
evolved because you have been receiving the information around your healing. And at this point, you know, Mars is like, let's, let's get on with the show. I mean, all right already. Like I heard it already. Let's move on. I love that. <laughs> so, so then we move into Taurus and we have the sun and the moon at 18 degrees of Taurus. We have Venus at 10 degrees of Taurus. Uranus and Jupiter are still in a conjunction with only three degrees apart. Uranus is 22 degrees, Jupiter 25 degrees. So Jupiter is getting ready to move into Gemini in about 20 days from the date of this recording. So we have another uh, sign change. But this right now, before it moves, this is a huge boon and a gift and like a treasure that the, like the treasure has been opened. And it's asking us to now dream the dream, to plant the seeds of the dream of the new you. Who are you now and what is it that you want and relate that to the house that it's in. A couple things to say about that is that Jupiter and Uranus, when they're together, are highly influenced by each other. So the shifting of the change, like Uranus is going to stay in Taurus and Uranus has been in Taurus for a very long time, but it's been, it's been changed by Jupiter. It's been expanded by Jupiter. It's been influenced by the teacher energy. And Jupiter now carries these codes of that conjunction into the next phase. And where is that next phase? Where is Gemini in your chart? And I'm referencing that because it's, I feel like it's very personal right now. It's, it's very personal. It's always personal, but it feels very personal. Like what has been happening to you? What's the narrative that you want to give it? And I, and I really invite you to give it a, a, a narrative that honors you. I was going to say a positive narrative, but what I really mean by that is a narrative that honors you because this has been a kick-ass journey and you're still here because you're listening to me. So something survived and some things had to go and it may have been painful, but now Venus is here to really cheer you on and say, you know what? You got this. You can do it. You did it. You can do it. We're moving into the future. And here is the blessing. Here are, are my blessings that I bestow upon you and really to open your heart with love, to receive abundance. And really, honestly, to learn how to receive, because we have been so trained in a patriarchal culture for thousands of years, we, we are really, as the divine feminine awakening, and I'm going to get to her in a second, because she's a huge part of this new moon, we are really bringing back the codes of trusting life, of being one with life. You know, when you, when the ego had separated itself and the masculine principle just shut out the connection with earth and said, you know, I'm going to dominate earth instead of working with earth and instead of listening to earth, because the ancients knew to listen that wind, rock, dirt, plants, the sun, Everything is life and it has a message for us. And that's a very Taurian principle. It's very earth-based. And so patriarchy wanted to kill that because there was something in the drive of, and, and, and everything is included and transcended. So I'm not maligning that. I'm, I'm over it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> and, and here it is that it's, it was part of a necessary part of our movement in evolution and we've gone too far. And now the feminine is here to bring us back into balance because we're going to kill it all off unless she steps up and she is the she that's in you. She is the she of who you hear the voice in the silence with your feet on the grass from the earth, feeling her frequency because She's not afraid. Animals are not afraid in that way. They're not existentially afraid. And they're not existentially afraid because they are one with her, with Gaia, with life. And imagine when you have that sense 
and you can tune in now, and this is part of your activation. When you tune into that, what happens is that you trust life. And we have to train ourselves to trust life because our families, our culture has conditioned us to not trust life. It wasn't safe in some way, shape, or form. So this is the Shiro's journey, coming back to trusting life. And what does that mean? Well, the North Node in Taurus is saying it means relax. Take a deep breath and breathe that into your pelvis, into your womb space. Now, Mars is in Aries, in the, in the seat of the divine masculine. So it's not about just eating bonbons on the couch. It, there's a, there is an arrow here. There is a, a line here. It is both and, and yet Venus is in Taurus and that's her ruler, just as Mars in Aries, Mars is the ruler of Aries. So he's at home, he's feeling like his power, but you know, she's also there. She's not abdicating it. She's got the sun and the moon there, you know, she's there saying, yeah, we're going to reign. These energies need to reign supreme. In Heros Gamos, what is that? The divine sexual union. The Eros that creates life is the Shiva and the Shakti, the masculine principle of the line and the feminine principle of the circle. Oh, that's the energy of this. So we have all the manifestation energetics ready for us and not to get something. Because again, that's more separation. That's more, I don't trust life. That's more of a grab. But it's, it's really from this place of the energies are moving and they want to do something and they want to have fun. And you are the creator of your life. You are the curator of your life and the creator of your life. And so we've been through, we've just really been through the... Um, the washing machine, you know, uh, you know, like the gauntlet, having to shed all the things that are not us. So I'm imagining by now, after the eclipse season, you are feeling clearer. You know your lane. You know where you're headed. You're ready to claim. Today on the activation call with the the sisterhood inside the ESN membership. One of the women, women just presents, like, I'm ready to hold, I'm ready to be soft. And I'm also ready for my mask, my masculine to hold me and hold my life. And that's a beautiful way of taking on this new moon. We have everything that we need inside of us. And she, and she is helping us get clear about what that is. So a couple other things, it's a revival point. What do you want now? And we emphasize now because before we were just different. I feel like everything got clear for me in a, in a strange way I, because it wasn't intellectual. I was asking questions and, and pondering over certain things. What are my next steps? What do I do about this? There was like confusion. I just honestly didn't know. And I kept staying with it and, and kept like, it's like a Rubik's cube, just trying to figure my way in. And I couldn't figure all my ways in. It probably would have been better if I just went like camping, but I didn't, I kept doing it, kept doing it. And then bam, all of a sudden this clarity comes through and, and it reveals itself. It was like the curtains moved away. And, and that's what I'm sensing is happening for you. Venus is cheering you on saying that you're worth it. And no one can tell you that you're worth it. No, not even Venus. <laughs> Your inner Venus can. You have to own that. It's just, it just gets to be not a question anymore. Are you willing to make it not a question anymore? And Taurus is the master builder. And I know this from the North Node in Taurus. That's my node, my North Node. And it's the master builder. So this Aries energy wants to initiate and spark. But Taurus comes after, uh, after Aries. And that Taurian energy. So now we had the spark and we come into the Taurian energy. And it's asking us something very different. What do you want to put your energy behind for the long game? 
because Taurus is a bull, you know, it's, it's got that staying with it quality. I mean, the, the downside is it doesn't like change, but the upside is that it's got perseverance in spades. So what are you so committed to as, as, as a matter of your stand of a matter of who you are now that you're willing to put your energy behind this project, this thing, and it's, and it is being revealed to you. So, so remember that the new moon in Taurus, let's, let's plant our seeds and let's look at what happens during the full moon in Taurus. And that happens in Scorpio season. So we're giving ourselves this like gestation period. I think the other thing to say is that we're at this point where no external validation is needed. I think I saw a lot of that today on the sisterhood activation where there was a deep level of giving permission to be who I am. And that's really where I'm, I'm going to end this. And then we're going to go into a, an activation, just a very short one, but to give ourselves the permission to be who I am. Because that level of self-acceptance will expand your self-worth, expand your self-concept until you don't even need one anymore, right? I mean, that's the thing. You got to be a self before you can be no self because everything is included and transcended. So we're playing the game of accepting who we are in this particularity, full on, full out as it comes through. And yes, there's going to be comparisons. There's going to be doubt. It's just, it's just how the matrix rolls. But we also just get to follow the beat of our drum. And, and that may take nuance and time to discover what these signals mean. You know, our body is super complex and, and we're kind of binary, like this or that, black or white. We get to get subtle. We get to get nuanced and that takes time. So give yourself time and let yourself make mistakes because it's not about not making mistakes, right? It's about being the fullest expression of who you are in this lifetime. That's your mandate. And by doing that, we amplify. All right. So let's go into a, a bit of an activation where I can take you into a space for this new moon. Oh, so close down your eyes. Feel inside. Feel that pulse. Feel the current of life. Feel the masculine principle inside, ready to go on fire for something and then feel your divine feminine. She is everything. She is nothing. She is chaos. She is creation. She is mother. She is sister. She is cosmic womb. She is the portal to everything. And feel this goddess Venus arising in your consciousness as that feminine principle. And then ask her for a message for this new moon. Venus, who I am now is, who I am now is. Be in conversation with your inner Venus, who I am now is. And as you receive your answers, the images in your head or the sounds, Begin to make some notes, who I am now is. And then turn that 
to a declaration, I am, I am. And let that be your new baseline. Let that drive now your movement forward. You don't ever need to sink below that again. You've shattered a glass ceiling and now you're on new footing. And this new moon is opening up new doors, new possibilities, because all possibilities come from a new way of being. So with that, let's gather all the positive energy we have generated here and beam it out and dedicate it to the merits. May all beings benefit from the merits of our efforts. Namaste.